Let's uncover the potential of pointers and arrays in this video. Let's declare an array of characters, also called string. So the type is character and I will call this array message equals hi. So this is my array. I could define the total length, but I don't have to in this case, so I won't. But what I do is I will start the serial connection. And of course we can output the message like this. And then we should see high in the serial monitor. Great, but what's the size of our array? You can use size of to figure out the size of my message array. Three, why is it longer than two? Well, let's look at every single character that is stored inside of this message array. Let's create a for loop and we will define a byte variable i equals zero as long as i is smaller than three and we will increase i and then we print i as well as the content of the message array at this specific point. So let's start with i. And then I will print this and then we'll finish with print new line and message at the place I. So now I only print one character at a specific place. Yeah, we still need serial.begin otherwise can't get anything from the serial port. All right, H on index zero, I on index one, and then something at index two, but we can't see it. So th this doesn't really help. So let's output it as decimal number. All right, so we see that the big H is represented by the decimal number 72. Let me check that actually. We can go to Wikipedia and search for ASCII. And then ASCII is basically a long table. And we now got the decimal number 72, which is H, a big H. Great. And 105 is the small i. So this is, this is great. But what's zero? So let's go back to the very top. And these are control code characters. So they can't be printed. So zero is actually representing the end of our string. So right now the messages array uses up three bytes in our memory. At index zero, we store a big H. At index one, we store a small i. And at index two, we store zero, which is represented by backslash zero or just null. It is basically the end of the string. All right, now let me show you something else. I can use the reference operator to get back the address of message. And to be more specific, I want the address of the byte at the index zero. And let's see what happens. Okay, so this is doing the same. And I can also check if it is the same by doing something like this. Let's see if message equals a pointer to the first byte of message. 
and the answer is one, which means yes. Let's create a pointer variable and then print the first element of our message. My pointer variable will be of type character and it's a pointer variable. That's why we need the asterisk. I'll call it p message and it is equal to message because message is actually a pointer to the first byte of the message array. And I could also use the reference operator add index zero because it's the same thing, right? I can also do that. And now let me show you different methods of printing the first element. We can just print message at index zero. This is the standard way. This is how you usually work with arrays. And this works. But what you can also do is you can use p message to print at index zero because it's the same thing. What you can also do, we can dereference message because again, message really is a pointer to the first byte of message, which is index zero. So this prints the content of whatever is at this address, which is the first letter in this case. And we can do the same for P message. And as you can see, the result is always the same. It's our first byte inside of our array. And here comes your exercise. Using the same four principles, I want you to print the second byte of this array, the character i. How can we do this? Let's start here. Here it's simple, right? Instead of printing the index zero, we're printing this index one. And it's the same for this one. However, here we need to increment the pointer because the pointer is pointing to the first byte of our array. And now we want the second byte. What we need to do is we need to add one. However, we need to do this before we dereference. So the result should look like this p message plus one, and then the referenced. And this is exactly what we expect. But now let's, let's use this concept for something useful. So what I want is a function which returns the name of a month. So I will write a function prototype. The function should return a pointer to a character array. And I will call it month. And it takes an integer parameter. I call it n. And this is my function prototype. So it declares the function name, the return type and the parameters. And this allows me to use this function inside of my code before it is implemented. So I can use the function like this. Let's print the month one. And this should return January in the end. So I need to store all of the strings. I will call it name. If someone requests a month that doesn't exist, I would like to output invalid month. And I will store it as month zero because month zero doesn't exist, which helps in this case. And then we have January. December. If n is smaller than one, then that's bad. Or if n is bigger than 12, that's also bad. 
So in this case, I would like to return name zero. And if it is within this range, then everything is fine. And I will just return name n. So let's see if this works. All right, it works, but there is one problem with it. And the problem is the scope. The scope of this name array here is within this function month. And so as soon as we leave the function month and return the array, this memory is basically free to use. And it could be overwritten by other parts of the program. And so what we need is we need to make sure that it stays. It should still be kept inside of the memory, even if we're outside of the function. And this can be achieved by using static. And this way it stays inside of our memory, even if we leave this function, which of course we do. And let's also try something invalid. Let's try month 100 returns invalid month and month nine returns September. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of Arduino. Let me know in the comments down below if you're using pointers. If you think this video is helpful, please share it to someone who should learn about pointers. Thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson.